Hi, I'm Michael Brown, one of the HP Senior System Engineers here at Tech Data. Today we're going to demo uh, HP's Virtual Connect Flex 10 technology. This is a technology that is available to you via our HP Rack and Roll Tour. This technology we hope to demonstrate the power that it can bring to enhancing your customers' data centers. If we consider a typical data center environment, each individual server is physically connected to its network resources. Server connections to the local area network rely on unique MAC addresses for every network interface in each server. This is usually burned into each NIC card at the factory. Likewise, server connections to storage area networks are established through unique worldwide names established with each host bus adapter in every server. To provide the physical MAC and worldwide connections identified in the previous slide, IT organizations have two basic choices which each have advantages and disadvantages. Pass-through modules are simple in design but can be expensive and complex to maintain, often require many hundreds or even thousands of cables in large organizations. Network switches can partially reduce the number of physical cables, but they can also increase the management load on the LAN and SAN. Both of these options also present a number of management challenges. Because the connections between servers and LANs are essentially hardwired, every time a server is added or changed, the network connections to the LAN and SANs have to be modified as well. Which This typically means coordinating schedules and resources across multiple administration groups. HP Virtual Connect is an interconnect option that simplifies blade server connectivity to LANs and SANs. The Virtual Connect architecture is built into every blade class enclosure that uses pools of MAC addresses and worldwide names that are assigned dynamically to server bays instead of hardwired to one-to-one -one assignments to individual servers used by regular pass-through or managed switch solutions. With HP Virtual Connect, LAN and SAN administrators can predefine networks and address ranges that administrators use to connect to their servers to their environment. Using server connection profiles that include LAN, SAN, and OS boot information, system administrators can connect servers to the networks by simply assigning server profiles to the blade system enclosure bays. Because server connections are assigned to enclosure bays and not individual servers, the LAN and SAN connections remain constant and are no longer affected by changes to the server environment. HP Virtual Connect simplifies networks by reducing physical cabling by up to 94% without adding more switches to manage. It simplifies data center operations by cleanly separating server management from network management. It enables system administrators to be self-sufficient so they can quickly move and replace servers when their business needs to adjust in a similar manner within minutes without affecting the availability of their production networks. And finally, it enables workload mobilization by simply assigning or reassigning a server profile. So how does Virtual Connect do this? Despite popular myth, it's important to understand that Virtual Connect is not just another switch, but it's part of the server infrastructure that is managed with the servers. Virtual Connect forms a layer between the servers and Ethernet and storage networks so that the networks can't see any changes in the servers. With pass-through or managed switch interconnects, responsibility for the blade system enclosure is split across the server and network administrators groups. Virtual Connect extends the boundaries of the server infrastructure to cover the entire enclosure. There's less effort to manage Virtual Connect because it's managed with the servers and it isn't as complicated as a switch. So the server administrators can easily handle that without detailed network knowledge. In comparison, a switch is part of the Ethernet or storage network. It is directly connected to a server NIC or HBA. It communicates with other switches that make up the overall data center communication fabric and it's managed as part of that fabric. In most enterprises, a switch by definition is owned and managed by the network operations group or the storage operations group. In whatever way the device works, if it is a switch, it must be managed by the LAN or SAN administrators because they must have total control over their network fabrics to make sure they can operate securely and efficiently. Note also that a network switch will typically modify network packets and fiber channel data frames. Virtual Connect makes no modifications 
and also has no impact on the OS or device drivers. This slide takes a further look at the typical hardwired server to network connections and emphasizes the administration with each of each key aspect. As we already discussed, in this environment, server to network connections are essentially hardwired and change management can be highly complex and disruptive. The network admin is responsible for configuring and managing the communication network resources in a LAN environment. The storage administrator is responsible for configuring and managing the storage network resources in a SAN environment. The network, storage, and system admins are all involved in configuring and managing the Blade server enclosure. Virtual Connect turns that hardwired environment into a simpler and more flexible infrastructure. If we compare the previous diagram of typical data center connectivity, you can think of Virtual Connect modules as a virtual wiring closet that sits between the server hardware and the network infrastructure, built right into the enclosure itself and not a bolt-on technology. It reduces the number and cost of physical cables and leased network ports and maintains constant connectivity between the enclosure bay and the uplink ports for LANs and SANs. Changes to the server environment have no impact on the Virtual Connect network connection, unlike the traditional switch or pass-through solution. It separates the management of the servers and network infrastructures. Each admin group still retains its core responsibility. Virtual Connect helps each administration group work smarter. Let's take a look at a traditional virtual server environment. In most virtualized environments, virtual servers need additional NICs to accommodate the additional consolidated workloads of typical networks. These servers often require six to eight NICs per server to accomplish this. This requires additional MES cards and interconnects to be added to the Blade servers. If we look at the same servers using HP Virtual Connect Flex 10 technology, we can accomplish this without adding additional MES cards or additional interconnects. HP's Virtual Connect Flex 10 technology allows us to take the two onboard 10 gig Flex 10 NICs and virtualize them into eight virtual NICs. Along with virtualizing the 10 gig NICs into eight virtual NICs, we can also throttle the speed of each NIC to customize the bandwidth needed for the environment. Let's take a look at a brief demo and see how this is done using Flex 10 technology. So in our environment, we have already set up our uh, Ethernet and SAN fabrics uh, in our Virtual Connect domain. Uh, we have here the uh, predefined MAC addresses. These are the virtual MAC addresses uh, that Virtual Connect will distribute out to the uh, Ethernet network, as well as the same thing on our uh, fiber channel side of things. Um, again, HP's Virtual Connect is determining these virtual worldwide names and will be you know, presenting those out to our storage devices. What brings us together are what we call server profiles. Server profiles actually uh, build up the resources, and here we have a few already defined, but today we're going to actually define a new one and show you how Flex 10, the Flex 10 technology, how that actually is configured. So here we'll call this test one. And right now you'll see we actually have two Ethernet ports here that we can assign networks. If we want to look at our production network, this would be NIC 1 and NIC 2 uh, on our traditional uh, server environments where they have a dual ported NIC. Uh, with Flex 10, when we add the additional network connections, you'll see here I can add in different networks that I've had predefined, whether it's an iSCSI network or just a simple management network. I can si simply just pick and choose which network I want which port to uh, connect to. Where Flex 10 allows you to do the throttling is through the, uh, the or through the port speed setting. You can go in and customize in 100 megabit increments all the way up to 10 gigabit speeds. So this allows me to have, you know, more control over 
how much bandwidth each physical or each virtual I should say each virtual NIC how much bandwidth that virtual NIC will utilize uh, in this environment for this one here we'll just say one and a half gig we'll do the same thing on the additional NICs Hi SCSI Right, Scuzzy, we'll set that a little higher. Maybe we want a little bit more bandwidth for our storage network. So we'll set that at 4 gig. When we make these settings, these settings are the connection at, to which the physical NIC, or I guess in this case I should say, in which the virtual NIC will connect through the uplink. So it's how much bandwidth it has from the physical NIC or the virtual NIC to the uh, uplink out to the outside world. If the outside world connection is only one gig, we're going to we're going to be oversubscribing that one gig or that bandwidth down to one gig. So keep in mind it's all dependent on your your network infrastructure, how much connectivity you have or how much bandwidth you have in that environment um, to allow for. Uh, you know, proper utilization. And here we'll set the management speed. Maybe we only need 100 meg for management, not too much speed there. Over here, you'll see here that it's assigned to, uh, or set up to, that the MAC addresses will be assigned by the Virtual Connect technology. Down here is where we can assign our SAN fabrics which SAN that we want each of the uh, HBAs to connect to. And again, the worldwide name is assigned by the Virtual Connect uh, Manager. Before I apply these changes and assign them to a server, I want to take a look at that server that I'm going to assign this uh, profile to. We'll look at the port mappings of that server. I like the table view a little better. But in here you can see the physical, this is the physical Ethernet and physical fiber channel port on that server blade. They each have a unique MAC address and a unique worldwide, uh, worldwide ID for each of the cards. If I go back to the Virtual Connect Manager and I assign this profile to that server blade and apply it, we'll take a look at what happens on the actual port mappings on the, uh, on the blade itself. You can see here that the Ethernet the ID is changed its MAC address. Now we see that the additional virtual NICs have also been added. So we've taken that physical network card, or cards I should say, uh, and divided that out into the virtual NICs defined um, with the Virtual Connect uh, Manager. Also notice that the fiber channel HBA Worldwide ID, um, that number also changed to be a virtual connect worldwide ID that was defined in uh, the Virtual Connect Manager. As you can see with the profile manager, uh, with the different profiles, it's easy to assign and reassign these server profiles for these network resources from server bay to server bay. This enables, again, the server administrators to quickly restore and repair down systems and not having to go through and reconnect or reestablish network connections or sand fabric connections, reprovision storage, um, those type of administrative functions that are required when replacing uh, servers in uh, typical environments.